Sure. Tell me one more point that I absolutely must have up here right now. Zero. That zero. That zero could be a change of sign. So where the numerator equals zero, that could also be a place where you want to at least separate your interval. It's not going to be an asymptote, but you definitely want to plug in, just to be safe, a number between zero and one. That's what you want to do. So try that. People on the left-hand side, why don't you try 0 0.5? Right-hand side, why don't you try 2 for me? See what happens around that. <clears throat> Shouldn't really be able to do it without a calculator, honestly. Um, because when you think about it, this is going to be a positive number, right? Positive, it doesn't matter, that's positive. Positive over positive is positive. Oh. It's going to be negative. Really? Positive. 0.5 is a positive number. You didn't check negative, did you? Because we should be checking between this little interval. That's why we have that. Yeah, 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 positive. Okay. 0.5 is positive, this is positive, positive or positive, positive. Aha, ah, we, this is the first time I think we've had one of these. Does the limit exist? Yes. yes, it does. This limit, as t approaches 1, of that nasty looking function, is what, can you tell me? Positive or negative? So our sign analysis is important. Our sign sound analysis. How do you say that? Even? Analysis. Analyses. Analyses. Oh, that's better. Our sign analyses important for you. <laughs> Are they important? Yeah, you gotta know how to do those. So when you can cross out, it's very easy. Those are holes. No problem. When you can't cross them out, you have to have some way to determine where they're going. And the way you do that is with a sign analysis, just like that. Don't worry about all the asymptotes if I don't ask them to for you. Worry about just where the limit says. If I'm asking for the all the discontinuities, I'm just asking for the points, right? This was a little extra for us in that case. I just wanted to see what happened. This is the application for a limit. Which I feel okay with this so far. All right, good. Now, the next question we have to answer is, what happens with the limit? if x doesn't actually go to a number. So for instance, x goes to 1 here, right? Or t in this case, a variable goes to, to 1. What if we say, I don't want to go to 1, I don't want to go to 2, I want to go to infinity. What happens to our function? I don't want to go to negative 3, I don't want to go to negative 4, I want to go to negative infinity. What happens to our function? That's what this next part is all about. So the question is, what happens in a limit, or to a function, as x approaches positive infinity, as far as we can, we can go, or negative infinity? Basically, x increases forever or decreases forever. What happens to our function? Let's take a look at two examples that are going to give us some insight as to this. just to kind of get a, a picture of what's going on. We'll have <clears throat> x and f of x. And we'll start very easily. We'll start at 1, 10, 100, and then a million. <clears throat> Let's do it for this one. What would happen, please, if x equal to 1, what would we get? One. How about if x equals 10, what would we get? 0.1. Okay. 0.1. Very good. Or 1 10. Yeah, clearly, right? 1 over whatever that number is. How about 100? 0 0.01. How about a million? 
Six zeros, right? Five zeros. Five, five zeros? Yeah, five zeros. What if x equaled a trillion? Would it get bigger or smaller? Smaller. What's it going to? Is it ever going to reach zero? But think about this. You're dividing a constant number by infinity, right? Like when you're a little kid and you go, you're wrong. Well, you're more wrong. Well, you're wrong plus 10. Well, you're wrong times infinity. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right? Well, if you did divide it by infinity, you'd have like, you'd have zero. You keep dividing by a bigger and bigger number, you're going to get zero, right? One divided by a billion is very close to zero. One divided by a zillion, that's a big number, a big number, is very close to zero. But you keep getting bigger and bigger, this quantity is closer and closer to zero. Are you with me on that? Zero. Let's talk about negative infinity. What happens as you go closer to negative <coughs> infinity? Well, that would be, I'm just going to change this. That would be negative, 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 negative. True? Negative, 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 negative. Is it still approaching zero? <coughs> yes. As we go to negative infinity, we're also approaching zero. <coughs> what this says is that if f of x, our function, gets really, really close to a number as we approach infinity, then the limit exists. So we can take limits as x approaches one of these infinities if x approaches an actual number. idea of really close to, that was the idea of that limit. If f of x gets really close to a number, as x approaches infinity, plus or minus, whichever one, <coughs> then the limit exists. Okay, well, if the limit exists, what's it stand for? What's it mean? Think about this. Let's say that you start taking your function and you start going forever in that direction. Well, it's also a karate move. <coughs> I'm going to take karate. No, no, but it kind of feels like it. Whatever. The limit move. So, if you, ever, if, by the way, if you ever try to do the math karate, you're going to get your, you're going to beat up. Never do math karate. So you go this way. Forever and ever and ever, and your function is going to the same number. Is it ever going to get to that number? No. no. Let's get very, 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 very close, right? What idea do we have that represents that? No. But not a vertical one. A vertical one says you're going to get really close to that, right? But never reach it. That's the same idea we have going this way. You're really close to that, but you're oh, then we don't have this idea. We only have one because otherwise we don't have a function. But we have this idea. We're going to get close to a number or close to a number close to a number or close to a number. That's a horizontal asymptote. So now we have two types of asymptotes. Vertical happens when you have discontinuities that are not removable. Shake your head or nod your head if you're okay with that. Horizontal happens when you take a limit of your function to infinity. And that's the idea. By the way, the same rules apply to these limits we're about to do. Uh, the rules for limits as x approaches negative and positive infinity are the same as before. So the same rules apply. Everything it, it holds the same. Which means one thing for us. <coughs> Consider this. <coughs> what if we take any, any 1 over x to the n power? Do you recall from limits that I can take the limit of the function and then raise it to the power? Do you remember that? That we could pull out the exponent? That was one of our prime rules. That helped us a lot. 
Well, notice how 1 to the n is always just going to be 1, right? So then this is true. That's a true statement. That's 1 over n. I'm sorry, 1 to the n, that's 1. This is x to the n, that's x to the n. Are you guys okay with that statement? Well, tell me something then. How much is the limit of 1 over x as we approach infinity? Yeah. What's 0 to the nth power? Yeah. So that's it. what this says in English is that any function where you're dividing a constant 1, because you can pull a constant out, any constant can be pulled out of that limit, any constant by some variable that's being raised or the, the, as x approaches to that, that infinity is going to end up being 0. It's going to have a horizontal asymptote at 0. 0 to the n or 0. Does it make a difference if we're talking about negative infinity? Let's consider that. Let's go to negative infinity. <coughs> negative infinity. That means, is this still true for negative infinity? Absolutely. Is this still true? Is 1 over x as x approaches negative infinity, is that still 0? 0 to this, that holds true for both of them. What this says is that 1, a constant over any variable that's being taken to infinity, is going to give you a horizontal asymptote. How many will feel okay with that, with that idea? No matter what the power is, squared, cubed, doesn't matter, because you're always taking that 1 over x to that power. 1 over x as x approaches infinity, either positive or negative, it's going to be 0. 0 to any power is still 0. Interesting thing. Horizontal asymptotes in each case at zero. Now, before we get into some other computational stuff, let me show you one more idea. Right now, we've done a lot of theory so far, so there's no, not really a whole lot of examples. We're going to change that in just a minute. But I got to talk about one more. I want you to think of polynomials. Let's talk about the limit of a polynomial as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Think about what you know. Think what you know about polynomials. Would you agree that polynomials are in one of these four what, one, two, three, one of these four cases? Polynomials are either like this, like this, like this, or like that. True? Because think about x squared. X squared like this. Does it ever go to an actual number as we go this way? Does it ever go down or up or and go to this? No, polynomials don't do that. Polynomials always have a tail somewhere. Uh, an x cubed would go this way to that way, right? Negative x cubed goes this way to this way. x squared goes this way. Negative x squared goes this way. They never actually go to an actual number. They're all either going to positive or negative infinity. So as we approach for any polynomial, positive or negative infinity on the x-axis, the function itself approaches positive or negative infinity on the y-axis. Let me say that one more time because I think I lost something. As you travel this way on the x, your function is doing one of two things. Going this way, 